In this video, we're going to look at voltage transfer characteristics for our circuit. So in order to do that, we have to have a defined input and output. So we've taken the circuit from the previous example, and we've now defined our VBB as our input voltage, and we've defined the voltage at the collector of our transistor as our output voltage. So ultimately what we're going to be working towards is a plot that shows how our output voltage changes as our input voltage changes. So let's consider sort of some key points as we sort of demarcate between our cutoff, our forward active, and our saturation regions. So first of all, we can see that if this input voltage VI is too low, it's not going to be able to bias that VBE junction such that it's on. So what we can say is for our VBE less than VBE on, so again, we can sort of think of this as a diode, so not VBE, so for VI, less than VBE on, which for our previous example, we had said it was 0.7 volts for this transistor. So in this case, our transistor is cut off. So the transistor is cut off. And so what that means is that we have zero base current and zero collector current. Now, coming back up here for this particular circuit configuration, how we've defined our input and output, if we have zero collector current, we have zero voltage across this 4K resistor, which means that our output voltage is going to be 10 volts. Now, again, this depends on our particular circuit configuration, but in this case, we can say our output is 10 volts when our transistor is in cutoff. So, of course, if we increase our VI above our cut-in voltage, so VI greater than VBE on, we're moving into our forward active mode. So moving into our forward active mode. And so of course for our forward active mode, now we can have some base current. So our base current IB is going to be equal to that input voltage minus the cut in voltage or the VBE on divided by our base resistor RB. And so that's actually going to be true as we head into saturation as well. But we know that in our forward active mode, we can say that our IC is equal to beta IB. And we can say that our beta IB, using our previous equation, is just going to be beta times the quantity of VI minus 0.7 divided by RB. All right, again, relating this back to our circuit, we can now say that our V out is going to be the 10 volts minus whatever is dropped across this 4K ohm resistor. And the voltage drop across the 4K ohm resistor is of course just going to be IC times RC. So we can say that our output voltage V out is equal VCC minus IC times RC. And again, plugging in our expression here for IC, we can see that our V out is defined as VCC minus beta RC times that quantity VI minus 0.7 divided by our RB. So I'm keeping everything sort of very general in terms of our, our variables so that we can look at it as our variables are changing. So let me move this down a little bit. So what we can see from this equation and what we understand intuitively from the previous example is as this VI continues to increase, so VI increasing is going to lead to our collector current increasing, and ultimately it's going to lead to our voltage across RC increasing, so that's this term right here. So voltage across RC is increasing, and what that means is that our V naught is going to be decreasing. And again, we can see all this from our previous equation, or we can sort of intuitively think about it in our circuit above. So at some point, our output is going to be equal to VCE sat. And so let me explicitly state something. Uh, because we don't have anything in this emitter branch, we see that our output voltage V out is actually equal to our collector emitter voltage VCE. So we can say note, that our output voltage is equal to VCE. So what that means is when we have that output equal to VCE sat, we're going to be moving into our saturation region.
And so we can see as we move into our, our forward, or sorry, when we're in cutoff, we're at 10 volts. We move into forward active, we're gonna be decreasing from 10 volts until eventually we get down to about, remember typical values are 0.1 to 0.3, and then we're going to be in saturation region. So let's figure out what that exact transition point for our input voltage is where we go into saturation. So we can say our V out with our equation above, which was VCC minus the beta RC times VI minus the 0.7 divided by RB, we wanna set that equal to our VCE sat. So keeping things general for just one more line here, what we can say is we can rearrange that and solve for our input voltage, which is going to be equal to VCC minus VCE sat, that quantity times RB divided by beta times RC plus 0.7. So what we can do is we can plug in values for this particular problem. So for our problem, we had 10 for our VCC. We were given in the previous video that our VCE sat was 0.2 volts. Our RB value is 220K. So I'm gonna put all resistances in K ohms. Uh, so that'll cancel out with our RB in the denominator, or sorry, our RC in the denominator. Our beta was given as 100 and our RC is 4K ohms. And we add our 0.7 at the end. So plugging all that in, we get that our VI is 6.09. And so again, this is our transition from forward active to saturation. So from FAM to SAT. So what we can do then is we can come and we can plot our V out versus VN, which remember was sort of our whole goal coming into this. So I have V out as my dependent variable, or sorry, V out, yes, V out is my dependent variable, VN is my independent variable on our horizontal axis. And so what we can do is we said for small input voltages, our output is 10. Once we get above 0.7, we know we're going to be in forward active and our, our output voltage is going to be decreasing up until we get to this point of saturation. And so we know now that that voltage where we reach that, we said is 6.09. So at 6.09, we know we're going to be in saturation. And so from there on out, we're going to be in our saturation mode. And in between there, we can approximate this to a first order as just a linear line connecting these two points. And so the three modes then are up here, we have cutoff. Here is our, our linear region, which is our forward active mode. And then down here, we're in our saturation mode. And so again, this linear, this linear plot for our forward active mode is a good first order approximation. So linear is a first order approximation. If you were to go and simulate this in a computer, you would see we actually have some curvature in there. But again, depending on how much accuracy you need, this linear plot might be good enough. So if you wanna see some more examples with different types of circuits, so we've kind of focused on our common emitter circuit here. Uh, for more examples, you can look on page 313 to 322 in the textbooks. And this is just showing DC analysis with other configurations. So DC analysis with other configurations. Um, the reason I don't wanna to spend too much time going through those is we're gonna come back and we're gonna deal with these a lot as we're looking at our, our BJT amplifiers. And there are some other important things that we wanna talk about, particularly our BJT biasing.